This world is a strange one. Your favorite monster is back. I've got 10 skinwalker stories for you tonight. These creatures from Native American folklore are on the prowl and looking for new skins to wear. Maybe yours will be next. Enjoy this mini marathon on this nightmare beast. If you missed it, I did my first live stream yesterday. Check out the two hour video via the link in the description. Stay tuned next Friday for another live stream at 5 p.m. Central. Also, I would love to do a deep web stories video, so if you've got a story from the deep web, go to deathbyfear.com to send it to me. Don't forget to subscribe and stay notified for more horror stories in the future. Now, get your skin suits ready. They better not be dirty when the skinwalker rips them off of you. Number one, Navajo Skinwalker in Colorado, submitted by Hunter L. My story begins in Colorado. I was 14 years old at the time. My family was taking a trip to visit my grandmother who lives deep in the country. We were planning to stay over a few nights and enjoy the peace and quiet of the country. I've always been more of an indoorsy person, but I did love taking a nice hike through the woods from time to time. The highway drive was long and uneventful, but once we finally got there, I was super excited. After all, I had my own room in the beautiful cabin my grandmother lived in, with an amazing view of the lake and forests surrounding the property. I exchanged greetings with her and after a few minutes of idle conversation, I headed to my room. I pulled out my laptop and began to get set up for a quality gaming session when I first heard the howling. It sounded like a wolf's cry, but slower, almost distorted. Like if you recorded the howl and played it back at half the speed and lowered the pitch, that's how it sounded. It was very creepy but having little to no experience living in the country, I brushed it off, assuming it was some animal I wasn't accustomed to. Soon the sun began to set, and I was exhausted at the time, partly from the really long car ride. I began to get settled into bed, and despite the thick comforter, something didn't feel right. It's a feeling that's hard to describe, like something was misplaced or missing. I didn't know what it was, but again, I brushed it off, telling myself it was just weird to sleep in an unfamiliar place, and soon I drifted off to sleep. I woke up around 10 in the morning, feeling really well rested, and I looked through my window. I could see that it had gotten foggy, as there were billowing clouds of mist drifting through the trees outside, and it was raining too, heavily. It was a bit difficult to see through the windows due to the excessive amount of water outside. I threw on some pajamas and went to grab some breakfast. When I walked into the kitchen, there was a note on the table. According to the note, my family left the house to grab some medication for my grandma and that they'd be back in a couple of hours. So I settled with eating some frosted flakes. I was sitting on the comfortable couch directly under the living room window, watching the rain and fog roll in. Then again, I heard that eerie howl, the same howl from the night before. It was so slow and thick, so deliberate. As that happened, I noticed a figure creep forward through the fog. Of course, foggy weather in the country can be extremely thick. I couldn't see anything over five feet from the window and I could barely make it out. But it looked like a dog or a wolf, almost anyway. The feeling that something was wrong, very, very wrong with this animal suddenly hit me. Slowly as the form of this thing came through the fog, I realized why I was feeling that way. The creature was standing on its back legs. I its back legs, I thought. I was shocked and confused. When I finally could think clearly, I looked at the creature in more detail. Its legs were twisted, bent in weird ways, almost like it was hit by a car. Of course, up here by the cabin, the closest road that's often used is a good mile away. As I looked on in horror, the creature spun around and on its two hind legs sprinted. In moments, it disappeared into the thick fog. As it turned around though, I could see that it had no tail, literally no tail like it was ripped off or never there. The moment I snapped myself out of that trance, I instantly ran back to my room shutting and locking the door. 
I hopped on my laptop, trying to Google and find out exactly what I saw. When my family finally got back around three, I waited until my parents were out of the room to tell my grandma. My parents would never believe me anyway. She was part Native American, but not that she was Navajo. She told me what she believed I saw was a skinwalker. Supposedly, it's a shape-shifting spirit or witch that takes the form of animals in order to harm people. However, it can never perfectly replicate the animal it takes the form of. When we left three days later, I was happy to get out of those foggy woods. After researching the legend of the skinwalker further, I honestly believe that that is what I saw. So to all of those listening, be careful when you go deep into the countryside of Colorado. If I met that creature outside of that cabin, I don't think I'd be here to share this story. Number two, Creature, submitted by Brianna. I live in a little town in New Mexico. This town is surrounded by dirt roads, dairies, and fields. There is a state park about 10 to 15 minutes outside of town. One day, my boyfriend and I were at this park. It must have been around three in the morning. We didn't really have anywhere else to hang out, so we would often go there to have some private time. We were about to leave, and we came up to this little intersection where the entrances were, and we see a vehicle turning in. So we sat and waited for the vehicle to pass, but the closer it came, the slower it got. It was a bit unnerving. I was getting nervous because we do have gangs out here. As the car approached, we noticed that the driver was an old lady. She was a tiny thing with curly white hair. And this is when things got weird. Remember, she's going very slow, so we got plenty of time to soak in this image of the lady. As she passed, she turned her head towards us. Her eyes were solid black. I swear to God, there were no whites to her eyes. Not like empty sockets, but as if she had black eyeballs. Or maybe like each eye was just one solid pupil. We both froze as she slowly drove past. All the while, we were both filled with fear and dread. I'm not sure what we saw, but there were so many unanswered questions. Why would a little old woman be at the park 15 minutes outside of town at three in the morning? What was she doing there? Why was she driving so slow and just staring at us the whole time? We were very weirded out and we started questioning what we saw, making excuses that we were just maybe tired, even though we both know what we saw. Well, a few months later, we drove out to the dirt roads to get away for a little bit. The sun was just setting. I knew we should have went home as soon as it got dark, but we decided to park and chill out. Suddenly, we both saw something out of the corner of our eyes. Instantly, we both jerked our heads around to see what it was. It was humanoid in shape, dirty with very long legs, but it ran on all fours. It looked more like a person trying to run on all fours because when it ran, it just didn't look right. At an unnatural speed, it ran into the field next to us and in a split second, it was gone. We were both so freaked out by this experience that we started the car and left immediately. New Mexico has many stories about skinwalkers but I've never really paid attention or tried to believe those stories. I thought it was just native superstition. But when we mentioned these stories to a couple of friends, they all began to open up about the weird things they've seen out on those dirt roads. After hearing those stories, after what we saw those nights, we have not been out driving like that again in a while because now it just seems too dangerous. Who knows what those fields are hiding? Based on the stories of the skinwalkers, I believe either of these sightings could be those, those menacing eyes of the old woman. It could have been a skinwalker wearing the skin suit of an old lady. Anyway, we're definitely not going to take any more chances out there. The last thing I want is to be out in the forest alone as something watches me through the brush. Number three, my disturbing drive from Florida to Ohio, submitted by Eon. I'm a Marine and I just recently got back from Japan as I'm being reassigned for recruiting duty. Upon my arrival back stateside, 
I found out I had to go to my next station early. Oh, there's nothing like hearing bad news right off the bat. Well, anyway, I live in the Orlando, Tampa area of Florida, and I had a long drive ahead of me to reach my destination, so I went ahead and got on the road. Later that night, I had been on the road all day going up I-95 North when I merged onto I-77 North. By the time I drove into Charlotte, North Carolina, it was getting dark fast and I was completely exhausted. I was seriously considering pulling over to get a little bit of shut-eye when out of nowhere, I saw the most terrifying thing. In front of me, right in my headlights, something darted in front of my vehicle. I slammed on the brakes immediately and my car came to a stop. Whatever it was seemed to stop for a moment before continuing to cross the road. During this quick moment, I was able to gather many details about this creature. It was inhumanly skinny and lanky and its skin was hairless and pale. All in all, the thing was humanoid in shape. Well, before I even knew what I was doing, I got out of my car, still worried that I almost hit a person, and I watched this thing dart into the woods on the other side of the interstate. The most chilling part of this, though, was when it stopped on the other side, just to look back in my direction, to let out this ear-piercing scream or howl, I don't know which. To my astonishment, it was met with a reply on my side of the interstate, and connecting woods. Something on the other side, another of its kind, had let out another scream in reply. So basically, alone in the dark on the side of the road, I was surrounded by these things. Without wasting any more time, I jumped back into my car and I booked it out of there. I'm currently sitting in a hotel room at the Super 8, about 12 miles from where I had encountered this thing. And I can leave you with this. My time in Afghanistan was far less frightening than the sound that this creature emitted. And I swear to God, for the rest of my time alive on this planet, I hope I don't see this thing again. Number four, Rock Throwing Skinwalker, submitted by Colton. I'm Native American from the Navajo tribe, and this story took place when I was about five years old. I'm from Utah, and my grandma lives in New Mexico, so from time to time we would visit her and have cookouts and whatnot. To set up where this takes place, my grandma has two plots of land that she used to live between during different seasons. She had a home in the desert beneath a mountain, and another within the mountain that requires a truck to get to, and which happened to be a Hogan from when my grandma was a child. This time of season, she lived up in the mountain, which is between spring and summer. Up in the mountain is lush with foliage and a dark forest that would make daytime look ominous. My parents would run to town to help her run errands and buy supplies that she needed. This time, they left around four in the afternoon and said they would be back very late. To give an idea of how far we were from the nearest city, Shiprock, if you're wondering. It would take around two hours to go down the mountain and drive to the city. We already expected them to be back late in the night. In my family, I'm the baby. I have my parents, my eldest sister, my older brother, and my other sister. And the team that went down to the city was my older brother and my other sister. The ones that wanted to stay up in the Hogan were my eldest sister and my cousin and me. So that'll give you some idea of who was there and where we were. It's around 9 p.m. that night, and we're sitting in the Hogan doing nothing because it's a moonless night outside, and it's pretty terrifying when you're five years old, and literally the only light is from a gas lantern. Suddenly, the dogs start barking at something. Soon, this escalates to the sound of them fighting something, as if they were trying to defend themselves or fend something off. From the sound of the dogs fighting and whimpering, my sister is trying to see what's happening from the only window in the Hogan, but of course she can't see anything. It's just that dark. My cousin and I are scared out of our minds because this never happened before. The dogs may bark or growl, but they never sounded so freaked out. They were acting like their lives were in danger and even scarier after all the fighting. There was complete silence. After a couple of seconds, we heard what sounded like rocks being thrown at our little Hogan. We began to panic because something got rid of the dogs, 
and is now coming after us. My cousin lives in this Hogan with my grandma, and they knew that a revolver was hiding in her drawer with her clothes. He tells my sister to grab it, and tells her how to load it and arm it. What we were planning to do was to run from the thing and flee to our relative that lives across this 200-yard field of dirt and knee-high grass in the moonless night. I just remember thinking how terrible of a plan that was, like it was some sort of situation right from a horror movie. I completely remember that feeling of sheer terror the moment we opened that door only to be met by pitch blackness outside. My sister, armed with a revolver, followed up behind us while my cousin with a bat led us. So we sprint outside like a bunch of bats out of hell and I'm trying to keep up and not lag behind, but it's hard. I don't remember running 200 yards so fast, but being a panicking five-year-old kid, thinking he's about to be pounced on by some creature, probably helped me across the way. Thankfully, we arrive at my relative's house, and of course, he's really mad that we're there so late, and he notices my sister with the gun. Long story short, she gets scolded for having the gun out and armed with kids around. He takes the gun and fires three times in the air and walks back to the Hogan. He stays with us until my parents come back. That's the most I can remember, and I know a lot of other creepy stuff happened at my grandma's, but that was by far the scariest, because who wants to run through an open field with the feeling of something chasing you? The next day when we checked on the dogs, or what was left of them, we saw a very disgusting sight. Something had killed them. Whatever that thing was, it finished off the dogs and began to throw rocks at our Hogan. I can only believe that it was trying to lure us out, which it successfully did, but I have no idea why it didn't attack us, because it literally had us in the palm of its hand. Number 5. Hunted. Submitted by Justin. My friends and I love paranormal stuff, and we love being scared. We practically study this stuff. So by now, we know about Wendigo, Skinwalkers, and many other demons. But until this one night, we never really knew what being scared meant. That night was about three weeks ago, when me and my friends decided to go into the forest in my backyard. There were three of us, me, me, T, and Josh. They were staying the night at my house when Josh came up with the idea to go for a walk in the woods. This was surprising to T and I, as he was usually the one that was scared. He said it'd be fun to try to creep ourselves out in the dark. We agreed and got some flashlights, then headed out in my backyard. Now, in my backyard, there was no fence separating the forest. The forest was huge, and I still haven't seen the end of it from my usual walks, and that's even during the daytime. We all walked close together for about five minutes when things started to happen. All of our flashlights began blinking and then just shut off. This couldn't have just been the batteries because it happened at the same time. What the heck? We heard Josh say. Then he just took off back to the house. Oh my God, Josh, I said under my breath. Suddenly a twig snapped behind us. I turned toward it, trying to turn my flashlight on again but nothing happened. T stepped closer to me as we both stared into the dark forest in silence. I wanted to run, but something held me back, maybe a morbid curiosity. It took a moment for my eyes to adjust to the darkness, but soon I could see what made that twig snap. It was a tall creature with a hunched back. The ribs of this beast were showing with flesh hanging from it. The head was of a deer skull and instantly I knew what this might be, perhaps a skinwalker or wendigo. It was like seeing something straight from your nightmares, something so unreal that you deny that you're seeing it, but it was there, so vivid. I'll never forget the sight of it. Honestly, things like wendigos and skinwalkers and creatures like that, they were just stories before, but now the story came to life before me, and I was scared for my life. I nearly screamed at the sight of it, but I tried to hold it in, trying not to make eye contact with it. I, I whispered to T, you need to run as soon as I do. I was far from sure of myself, but I thought maybe 
we could run fast enough to get back to my house before it got to us. So I bolted. T took off right toward the house, but my plan was to cut off in a different direction before I headed home. That way, at least one of us could make it. Not too long after that, though, I began to hear footsteps behind me, and my heart began to race. As those footsteps caught up to me, I turned to face my fate. But there was Josh with a different flashlight. I'd never been more thankful to see him. Holy crap, dude, are you okay? He asked me. Man, we saw something. The look on his face said he didn't completely believe me, but he replied to me. I just came back to look for you guys to make sure you're okay. Still completely terrified, I looked back deeper into the forest behind me when an ear-piercing screech broke through the air. I wanted to just be home. I've never heard anything like this before and it sent chills down my body. Josh and I ran as fast as we could towards T in the house, but whenever we looked behind us, we heard footsteps coming from something else. We just kept running as fast as we could with something trailing close behind us, when suddenly my head caught an overhanging branch and it knocked me to the ground. Josh mustn't have seen because he just kept running. I lay there on the forest floor, scared, tired, and now in pain. I was too afraid to look behind me. I just knew that I would see that thing standing over me, waiting to kill me. Thankfully, the next thing I saw was T running through the bush back towards me. He actually came back for me. Before I could be filled with hope though, T stopped in his tracks before he could reach me. He knelt down and he didn't once take his eyes off of something behind me. His eyes were so wide and his mouth was open. What was he seeing? He looked so scared. It was almost more terrifying than actually seeing this thing, just knowing that it was right behind me. Then those same footsteps that were following us before, I heard them again, but this time, they were walking away. If I wanted to survive this, this was my chance. I got up and I sprinted to the house, T just barely in front of me. The whole way there, we didn't see or hear anything else. When we got back to the house, Josh was waiting at the back door with his head barely poking out of it. I rolled my eyes when I saw him, but none of us said another word for the rest of the night. We got inside, locked all the doors, and just sat there. We all waited for the sun to come up, the three of us in silent agreement that we should probably never go back in those woods again. Number six. Wendigo or Skinwalker, submitted by Anonymous. When I was a child, I remember playing hide and seek with my friends, who I still talk to to this day. But it was back then that we stopped playing hide and seek because something happened. My house was backed by a forest of pine trees, so there wasn't a whole lot of brush and you could see about a mile in. Keep in mind, we were about three miles away from any other houses, so it was often very quiet. As well as being very creepy at night, it also seemed very eerie during the day. I always got chills when I was out there, yet that didn't stop us from camping, hunting, and just playing in the woods. So one summer evening, myself, my mom, dad, and friends, Jeff and Lily, had gone out to camp. What was special about this time was the fact that we went deeper than we've ever been into these woods. After hiking out, we set up camp, and by then it was already getting dark. We whined to my parents to let us play for almost 10 minutes until they said fine. So it was about eight, and it was dark out. We got some flashlights and we began our games. Of course, like always, I counted first. I began counting, all the while hearing giggles and running feet behind me. After 30 seconds, I turned and I listened. Now, keep in mind, it was summer. You should hear birds, frogs, and crickets. But at the time, I heard nothing. Not wanting to seem like a wuss, I sucked it up and started seeking. After a minute or so, I heard movement, and I instantly saw something that would scar me for the rest of my life. I saw a tall, pale creature, about eight feet tall, and it was still hunched over. Its limbs were thin and elongated, with long, bony fingernails. Its hair was white and thin. The moment I saw it, I screamed so loud, it turned to me 
and this thing, it actually spoke. It said to me, Hush, child, I don't want to hurt you. Now, being a 12-year-old, I had some sense that I knew this thing was going to kill me. I tried to move, but I was completely petrified, so afraid that I could barely breathe. While stuck in a staring contest with this yellow-eyed creature, I tried to remember my way back. The second it took a step toward me, I grabbed my flashlight and I bolted back the way I came. As I was running, I could hear this thing behind me. I turned to see the spot where our camp had been, only to see the remnants of a fire. So instead, I headed home. When I was a few feet away from my yard, I hit a root and fell flat on my face. And I thought, honestly, that I was dead. But as I fell, my dad came out with a shotgun and screamed every possible swear out into the woods. Now, this whole time, I didn't hear footsteps behind me. I just ran. But then as I lay there facing my house, facing my father, only inches behind me, I heard the same voice as before. I'll be seeing you soon. I nearly fainted right there when I realized how close it had come to me. The voice was only a few inches behind me. As soon as I could get myself back up, I ran inside, running into my mother's arms and crying. Apparently, my family had seen this creature in the forest before me. They were unable to find me, and having to care for the other children, they had to get home fast. They had left me. A week later, we moved closer to the city, and we ditched all of our outdoor gear. I remember something a week later. We set up a trail cam, but no one dared to go out there. Ever since that night, I've been wondering what we saw, and to my understanding from my research, I think we may have seen a skinwalker. Mostly, I'm just glad to be alive, and I will never be going out there to see that thing again. Number seven, Skinwalker on Easter, submitted by Anakin. It was the last day of school for Easter, and I was excited for it, until I had a bit of an accident. I ran headfirst into the mirror on a truck, and I ended up having to go to the hospital. I spent a whole day in the next morning there, but I was soon feeling a bit better. So the night before Easter, my cousin and I were walking to the nearest gas station to buy a few snacks and some junk food. I noticed on my right was a small patch of woods. My cousin then spoke up and said, Dude, we should go in there. I just looked at him like he was a madman, but I agreed to go. Maybe it was just peer pressure. Boy, was that a bad idea. For one, my injury was making my head hurt. And then when we walked about 50 yards in, I began to hear something that sounded like something eating or thrashing at meat. I told this to my friend and he told me to remain calm, that it was probably a bobcat or a coyote. I told him in this part of Michigan, there's rarely anything like that. Then he said maybe it's a wolverine or something. But then again, this far north, I thought to myself, that's not likely. We ventured on though, trying to ignore the sound. Later, I hear something that sounded like my cousin, but he's right next to me. But coming from the trees nearby, I hear his same voice. Dude, come over here. We both stopped in our tracks, now completely petrified. We both knew that that wasn't him. I could even see the look of terror on his face when he heard it. As we sat there thinking silently, wondering what we should do, we then saw something of a silhouette dart between trees in front of us. We turned tail and ran back to the gas station. But before we exited those woods, we could see the same silhouette darting between trees around us. Whatever it was was easily keeping pace with us and it seemed to be just toying with us. We ran harder, pushing ourselves to the limits. We didn't stop until we made it back to his house. There, we tried to take our minds off of things. We didn't feel tired after that. We stood up playing video games and watching videos. The next morning, my mom picked me up, and I couldn't be happier to get away from those woods. Needless to say, I won't be going back to that patch of woods. Number eight, I saw something at the campsite, submitted by Firebolt U. I was 15 years old and I thought I was invincible. 
my mom forced me to go to the Boy Scouts and it was my first camp out with them. Now, before this camp out, I already had a good amount of badges and was strong and sporty, but I was always up for something new. Well, we piled into the truck and were driven to the campsite. I still remember what the camp looked like. It was filled with chipped pieces of wood and was surrounded by forest. We started off with the usual, making a fire and playing manhunt with more people my age. As the sun began to set and our scoutmasters, let's call them Benjamin and Thomas, told us older kids to go into the forest and find some food, such as rabbits or birds to eat. So we went into the damp forest, unsupervised. We all split up so we could cover more ground. I decided to find some rabbit holes. I'd been around this area before with my parents, never camping though, so I knew where some rabbit holes were. I began to hum to myself as I walked. This is when I first saw something. In the distance behind a tree, there was the silhouette of a deer with antlers. The antlers had many points, so I assumed it was a large buck. The thing was standing still, as if it was trying to listen. I never once saw it move, so I continued to walk slowly closer, thinking it'd be cool if I could get as close as possible to a wild deer. But as I gained some perspective on this creature, as the tree moved from my view, I realized that this was nothing natural. This was no ordinary animal. What I was seeing looked to be something standing on two legs with a deer's head at the top, but the whole thing was all skin, leathery black skin. And this thing wasn't listening. It just had its head tilted down, facing the forest floor as if it was a statue. I began to reason with myself that maybe it was, maybe it was some crazy artwork by some stranger, but then I saw it breathe. Without chancing it, without taking another step towards it, I turned around and I ran back to camp. I was so afraid that I was staggering and tripping the whole way. When I got back, I was too afraid to tell anyone. I just wanted to go home. I didn't know if anyone would believe me, but I know what I saw. Number nine, my skinwalker encounter submitted by Paul 115. What I'm about to tell you happened two weeks ago. I was going on a trip to my grandparents' place and that's about a one hour drive. The road leads through a huge forest nearly 45 minutes of the drive there. So I left with my parents at around six that night and it was almost completely dark. So through the whole drive, it was going to be night, I assumed. Half an hour went by and it was pitch black outside and only our car's headlights and the moon's light were giving any light at all. Suddenly, as I was watching through the windows, I will mention that we were going slow just to avoid any slippery turns. I saw something and I instantly regretted looking out that window. There in the dark of the woods was a pale white, almost human-like figure and only by the light of the moon, I could make out some features on its face then it moved its head towards our vehicle. I saw two red eyes. They were like portals directly to hell. I was terrified instantly. The creature let out a high-pitched screech that I could hear from within the car, and I knew that it was coming from this creature because as it started, its jaw widened inhumanly so. My mom and dad turned their heads trying to find the source of the noise. They heard it too. After looking at my parents to see if they heard it, I looked back at the creature. It was now no longer sunk to the ground. It was now standing on its legs and was easily about seven feet tall. The moment my dad saw it, he decided to throw caution out the window. He floored it. Then we watched as the creature got back on all fours, then charged into the woods, disappearing. Now this was a one-way road and it went on straight for a few miles, but I swear the whole way the same distance from the tree line to the road, we heard those screams over and over. Apparently, this creature was somehow keeping pace with us. When we finally arrived at my grandparents' place, we all got in the house as quickly as possible, completely forgetting any luggage that we had in the vehicle. Inside, we rushed through salutations and we locked the door. And then we heard the screaming around the house. My grandparents' expressions were different than that of my parents, and instantly we all knew that my grandparents recognized this sound. 
The next few hours went by as we all sat in the living room, cuddled up together, and my dad and grandfather both had 12-gauge shotguns at the ready. After a long while, I somehow finally fell asleep. That night, though, I kept waking up in the middle of the night, over and over, every so often, but every time I did, I would look out the window, and there would be red eyes in different windows. Whatever was out there, it was moving from window to window, keeping a close eye on us, or maybe it was trying to find an entrance. When everyone was awake in the morning, everything seemed to go back to normal, and during our little getaway, we didn't hear anything or see anything else like that creature. I couldn't have been more thankful. To this day, I don't know what it was, but one fact remains. My grandparents know something, but they refuse to give any answers. And number 10, Until Dawn, submitted by X Seraphim X. My family and I were going to a family reunion on my uncle's ranch or farm. Every five years, we would have the reunion, and every time, I would awkwardly follow my parents around and stuff, talking to cousins that I've never met before. Anyway, some of the grown-ups decided it was a good idea to stay and spend the night, drinking. My parents decided to stay too, and I don't know what possessed them to put me in charge of the toddlers and teenagers, but those kids were like half my age, and two of them were older than me. I wasn't really up to it. Somehow, we ended up sleeping outside in tents that were in a row, overlooking the thick bushes and trees outside. It was about one in the morning when all of us finally went to sleep, because last I checked, all the phone lights were off. I woke up listening to eerie howls of pain coming from behind one of the tents. Now, howls like this were normal, because there were a lot of coyotes on my uncle's ranch, but they wouldn't come this close to humans. I ended up listening to the howl. It slowly died off. I woke up again later, listening to the sound of odd ripping noises to the left. I got up and peeked my head outside of the tent, and what I saw shook me to my very soul. It looked like a deer on its hind legs until I took a second glance. There looming over a tent only a few feet away from me was a tall and gray creature with dangling arms and horns on its head. It was just peering into a hole it made on the top of a tent. I wanted to scream and do something, but I was paralyzed with fear as this thing put half its head into the tent hole. I never realized that my cousin was up and looking at this thing until she threw a small pebble at it. I pushed her back inside and closed the tent we were huddled in. We sat there listening and waiting for it to do something. We could hear it out there sniffing the tent and we could still see its tall shadow. It was just circling the tent for a while until we heard another howl off in the distance. Finally, this weird creature scattered away like it never happened. We stayed up until dawn and I was too tired and scared to go tell our parents what happened. The last thing I was about to do was exit that tent. In the morning, some tents were ripped and there was what appeared to be drool on some of the tents. I never got around to telling my parents what I experienced. I don't know why I still haven't. I really haven't bothered to share this story with many people. Maybe I'm still scared deep down. Skinwalkers are some of the scariest beings I've ever read about. These creatures are both ravenous and intelligent. Most creatures that show up on my channel are just that, animals but skinwalkers are different. They know what they're doing, what they want. They'll try to trick you, try to lure you in in any way possible to that quiet spot in the middle of the woods. Just remember, if you step even one foot toward that noise, you won't be coming back. In fact, no other living soul will probably ever see you again. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to send us your deep web horror story soon at deathbyfear.com. Also, stay tuned next Friday at 5 p.m. Central for the next live stream. Thanks.